numbers or we need to find critical numbers in finding extrema or absolute extrema of a given function. Now there are two conditions that you need to satisfy when you're finding or looking for the critical numbers. The first condition is that, that f prime of c will be equal to zero or the uh, constant that we're looking for will be equal to zero and the second condition will be f prime of c is undefined and we're going to verify those two conditions to see or check if the critical numbers that we are considering will be valid for our function. Now, in finding the critical number, the rule is pretty simple. Take the deriv derivative or the first derivative of the function and then satisfy the two conditions. So that's what we're going to do. Given that f of x is equal to x squared all over x squared minus 4, using the quotient rule, we'll be able to find the derivative of f of x, which gives us x squared minus 4 times 2x minus x squared times 2x all over square of x squared minus 4. Now, in finding the critical number, it is advisable that you simplify your function to its simplest form. Because imagine if you're going to find or solve for uh, the zero of this function without simplifying it. It will be a nightmare because there's so many um, terms and variables that you need to work on. So that's why I simplified my f prime of x and I simplified it into negative 8x is equal to the square of x squared minus 4. Now that this is my f prime of x, I could easily find my first, um, or I could verify my first condition by equating my function to zero. Now to equate, when you equate your function to zero, you cross multiply your denominator to zero, and when that happens, it will turn into zero. That's why you have negative 8x equal to zero. So it's safe to say that whenever you're working with a rational function, you're only checking, you're actually just checking the numerator and solving for x of the numerator to find or to solve for the first condition. So therefore, on our first condition, x is equal to zero, which is a possible candidate for our critical number. We are not sure yet if this is a critical number because it needs to satis satisfy our function. So we're going to go or deal with that in a little while. Let's satisfy the second condition wherein we need to find that number that will make our function undefined. And for a rational function, to make a rational function undefined, your denominator will be equal to zero. So that's what we're going to find. We're going to find that number that will turn the denominator to zero. That's why I pulled out x squared minus four, parentheses squared, and solved for x to find its value that's undefined. And by doing so, I found out that x is equal to plus or minus two for my second condition, which is also my candidate for my critical numbers. Now the question is, between these two groups of critical numbers, which, or are they going to be considered as a critical number, or only one group will be considered as a critical number? So let's check. So this is our original function, our f of x. If you plug in the value of zero from the first condition to our function, you will see and verify that you will still have a real number because zero over negative four will still be zero, and zero is also a number. That's why x is equal to 0 is a critical number. Now to verify if positive or negative 2 will be considered a critical number, you need to go to your function and replace x by these values of x, which is positive 2 and negative 2. And if you will notice, if this is positive 2, this will turn into a 0, and if this is negative 2, the denominator will also turn to 0, therefore making it undefined. So this 2 number right here will not be your critical number. So therefore, x equal to zero is the only critical number for your function using this method. Now for our second example, we have f of x is equal to x times squared of 16 minus x squared. So we're using the uh, product rule in finding the derivative of this function. So this is my f, or my first function, and this will be my g. And using the product rule, I was able to derive f of x and change it into 16 minus x squared raised to 1 half minus x squared times 16 minus x squared raised to negative 1 half. Now, I need to simplify my derivative so I can easily find the zeros and the number when it's undefined. And by doing so, I'm going to use factoring. I'm going to factor out 16 minus x squared raised to negative 1 half and put, put it outside. 
leaving me with 16 minus x squared for my first term and negative x squared for my second term. So this is what's left, and since I have a negative exponent, I can simplify this by changing it into a rational function. So now I have f prime of x is equal to 16 minus 2x squared, because you can combine these two together, all over 16 minus x squared raised to 1 half. Now that I have my f prime of x, I can use my uh, derivative function to verify my first and my second condition. So my first condition, we need to find when the constant is equal to 0. And by doing so, since it's a rational um, function, we can cross multiply and leaving us with 16 minus 2x squared is equal to 0. By solving for x, we have x equals plus or minus 8, which is the possible candidates for our critical number. Now for the second condition, we're going to check when the function is going to be undefined. And it's going to happen if the denominator is equal to 0, and that's what we're going to find. So set this to 0 and find the value of x of this denominator. And by doing so, we found out that x is equal to plus or minus 4 using this procedure. Now we have two groups of critical or possible critical numbers. And to be able to verify which group we can include, you need to look at your first function, your original function f of x, and plug in the values of x to your function and see if it will return a real number. And for the first function, we'll have positive or negative square root of 8. And if we plug in for x and x for this uh, particular condition, they will all or both of them will give us a real number. So therefore, x equals plus or minus square root of 8 can be our or our um, critical number. Now, the second uh, group of critical numbers that we need to verify will still use the same procedure. We will use f of x, which is x squared of 16 minus x squared, and plug in the values of positive 4 and negative 4 in the function and see if it will return a real number. And it's a real number. So both of which will give you a real number when you plug them in. So we can include x equal to plus or minus 4 as our critical numbers. Therefore, our critical numbers will be positive of negative square root of 8 and positive negative 4 for this function.